the moment, if everyone lived like Europeans, we'd need three planets to support us. The word waste is, is disgusting. And I think just to be wasteful and to sort of be bling bling, look at me, I'm rich, is kind of really inappropriate and just feels wrong, very wrong. We are going through what is global systemic crisis of life systems. And, um, and everybody is affected, including the rich. The events of the last year have been extraordinary, unprecedented, and certainly not something that any luxury executive or watcher has seen in their lifetime. It is a challenging time for the luxury industry, with the economic downturn threatening sales and a growing awareness of real social and environmental challenges such as climate change, wars over resources, and increasing consumer expectations of luxury brands. The luxury world cannot live in a bubble. We are not uh, isolated. We live in the world. This week, the Luxury Channel investigates the industry's response to our changing world. We meet Dr. Jen Bendel, who has been challenging the industry to place sustainability at the very heart of luxury. Luxury brands are used to being very proud and in many areas of craftsmanship and heritage, justifiably so. But they can't really be proud about their performance on social and environmental issues yet. We attend two luxury industry summits in Monaco and Delhi to find out how luxury leaders are tackling issues of sustainability. The biggest problem with sustainability in any industry is the fact that there is no general definition of what it is. Does it mean eco-practices in your factories, eco-practices in your offices? Does it mean products that are not disposable? Does it mean you treat your workers well? Does it mean that you offset your carbon credit? I think this is an issue. We visit the 1.618 Luxury Eco Fair in Paris. To me, luxury has to integrate ethics. It has to nurture the, its tradition of beauty and artisanry, but it has to also become pertinent to the needs and to the reality of the 21st century. And we talked to Gucci about their association with the groundbreaking film Home. It's taking you into this journey of explaining to you where the earth comes from, what we've done to it, which is pretty bad, and then it ends on such a positive, poetical note that that's the part that makes me cry the most. We find that the world of luxury is changing fast and might even provide some solutions to global challenges. But to begin, we discover why it is that the WWF has the luxury industry square in its sights. The WWF Deeper Luxury Report came about because WWF, uh, one of the world's largest environmental organizations, made a commitment a few years ago to start to move beyond talking about conservation and working on conservation as something out there, um, so you know, beautiful environments that we want to protect, and actually to start talking about how we ourselves, through what we consume, where we work, what we invest in, um, how we affect the state of the planet. The report not only mapped out the social and environmental challenges facing the luxury industry, such as pollution through mining and working conditions in factories, but it made a compelling case for why luxury brands would benefit commercially from addressing such concerns. And what we found is that luxury brands were lagging. We found them to be, many of them to not have policies on social environmental performance, many of them not to have a systematic approach to monitoring their performance and reporting it or engaging with stakeholders to find out what the most important issues are. Uh, and we found that many ethical indices of the best companies on social environmental performance didn't include any of the luxury brands. They're just not there. The report graded and ranked the companies, giving none higher than a C plus. 
It also called on celebrities to be more responsible when choosing which brands to endorse. Some of the world's leading fashion journalists have said that in the, the past 18 months since the report came out, there is the beginning of a paradigm shift in the industry and towards recognition that sustainability is core to the future of luxury. It's actually uh, part and parcel of what it will mean to be a luxury brand. I think sustainability is absolutely an area where all brands, and particularly luxury brands that really base a lot of their value on perception, um, must take a lead. Sustainability and luxury have to work together. They have to be together. But what is sustainability? It was defined at the UN General Assembly in 1987. Meeting the needs of the present without uh, undermining the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Underpinning any form of human development, however, is sustainability of the environment, the planet's ecosystems, biodiversity, and its capacity to support life. Destruction of rainforests, overfishing, overpopulation, species extinction, pollution, the huge gulf between rich and poor nations, are but a few of the issues that severely challenge humankind's prospects for long-term survival. The question is, does the luxury industry truly grasp the seriousness of the problem? I think that the problem with business full stop is that an awful lot of people seem to believe that the rules of business were handed down to Moses himself and don't realize that they're just human constructs. And I think the future will see us looking at these big corporate structures in such a way that a company could be transformed into a quasi-social enterprise. That's not to say that it shouldn't be profitable, but what all these companies need is the liberation to be able to optimize profit, not necessarily maximize it. Because at the moment, legally, a, lim a public limited company has to maximize profit, which means that when they do really touchy-feely things, you may think they're doing them for all sorts of uh, hearty reasons. They're not. They're doing it for brand value because the only way they can do it is to justify to their shareholders that they're going to get money or keep their market share by doing those things and they would lose it if they didn't. It would be a real tragedy if because of a growing awareness of this opportunity that some brands moved forward in a superficial manner and marketed themselves um, as, as green or responsible companies when actually that was only because of some corporate sponsorships of some charities or sort of glamorous events promoting an issue. Today, ecology is the new miracle marketing and advertising, advertising world. It's, it's an obscenity. There's something rather kind of wrong about brands just jumping on the bandwagon. There's, there's a lot of um, terminology about, you know, green is the new black, and actually, no, it's not. It really isn't. Um, it's about being sensible. Sustainability involves moving beyond seeing environmental or social challenges as costs and seizing opportunities to provide consumers with an enhanced experience where they contribute to solutions. A rare example of a high-end luxury brand embracing a cause is that of Loro Piana, who have recognized that through luxury fashion, its customers can even contribute to the conservation of wildlife and the natural world. Loro Piana, in partnership with the Andean Paisano people and the government of Peru, has been instrumental in saving the rare vicuna from extinction. The vicuna lives in this landscape, which is unreal, uh, peaceful, and uh, the fabric is, is so superior to anything else. It's always been known as the finest natural fiber that you can spin, weave, and, and you can touch, and you can use to do superb products, the, the finest. Only 40 years ago, the population of the Vicuna was a mere 5,000. The Vicuna, a member of the Camlid family, had been hunted and poached to virtual extinction, prompting the Peruvian authorities to ban trade of any sort in the animal, and to create the first nature reserves to encourage repopulation In 1987, some of the trading restrictions were removed, allowing fabrics obtained only from the shearing of living animals to be marketed internationally. In 1994, Loro Piana, in collaboration with the local Andean communities, were granted contracts by the Peruvian government 
to collect a strictly controlled number of fleeces and return the precious fibre to the international market in exchange for helping protect the vicuna. Today, maybe in the end, is there are around 200,000 vicuñas, and I think there is room for over a million. Obviously, we cannot develop a million heads by ourselves. But basically, my role is more to take the raw material, manufacture, and try to distribute to the right customers. Not that much to breed the raw material. I'm not a, a, a farmer. They say they are. They are breeders and, and farmers and experts. So to produce more raw material in, in going forward can give a lot of possibility to the to the people here to live in a more, let's say, modern way, making their own money to give them a reason to stay here and not to move to, to cities. When you think of a company like Loa Piana in Italy and what they've done to save Vicuna. I'm sure we're going to see more and more of that. People who are aware that the planet is a precious thing, just as luxury should be precious. And the two thoughts should be put together so that everything that we're creating in a truly luxurious world should be things that have come, that have roots in sustainability. It is quite clear from the research that we have done that consumers want this. They have said quite categorically, we want to be part of the solution, we are engaged with this issue, and we want to do something about it. And we are looking to you, companies, brands, not governments, but brands. Consumers want brands to lead this debate. Simple. Some luxury brands have already stepped out beyond their core businesses to initiate sustainable and attitude-changing projects. The Anja Hindmarch, I'm not a plastic bag phenomena is a case in point. The I'm not a plastic bag project came about through conviction actually. And I think all these uh, projects have to come with that word conviction, it's a very important word. It came simply because I had a little gremlin on my shoulder saying, you're being wasteful, it's sort of disgusting, what can you do about it? We are approached by this fantastic organisation, We Are What We Do, who um, had brought out this book, Change the World for a Fiver. And the first action of their 50 actions in their book was, wherever possible, refuse plastic bags. And so the idea was to try and very simply create a huge amount of awareness around that, that very important point. Indeed, 80,000 people queued in England in one day for that bag and on and on all through different countries. But the exciting thing and the important thing is that we reduced consumption of plastic bags, I think, from 13 point something billion to, to nine in a year, which is, which is really exciting. And it shows actually that fashion can have a voice outside of the industry. Not enough is being done by luxury companies today. Uh, there is a long way to go. Many people in the industry who really now have woken up to sustainability would agree that they are at the bottom of a, of a mountain to climb. Um, but it must be climbed because otherwise um, there is no future for their brand. Coming up, we visit the world's first eco-luxury fair in Paris, talk with luxury leaders at the world's largest eco-luxury events in Monaco and Delhi, we learn about Gucci's association with the groundbreaking film Home, and find out how the luxury tourism industry is confronting issues of sustainability. The luxury industry stands accused of disregarding the global challenges of sustainability. Yet, the reality is that at last, the industry is beginning to embrace its responsibilities in being part of the solution. The luxury brands are global, famous, prestigious, aspirational brands. And if we want the world to come together to actually change our behavior and live sustainably, we really need to see sustainable living as aspirational. I think that working in the industry that I do and as someone who runs a company, it's incredibly important, almost a duty, I would say, to be pushing these, these issues. If we push, we can have an influence. I think this is an incredible chance given to luxury. It's to be, to be seen as useful in society and not only as useful to the rich people. Useful to everybody. The 1.618 Sustainable Luxury Fair at Paris's edgy art mecca, the Palais de Tokyo, was an opportunity for carefully selected eco-lifestyle entrepreneurs, artists and designers to exhibit their products and projects. There are many goals behind this event. 
to integrate the notion of both luxury and sustainability, which I believe are naturally related. We wanted to give a platform to these emerging and innovative projects that have incorporated all these new values, eco-conceptualization, human respect, ethics, and to inspire end users who want to live with greater meaning. The premise of the 1.618 Sustainable Luxury Fair was that exhibitors, products and services had to be both ecologically sound and luxurious in nature. The exhibits ranged from electric sports cars to recycled gold jewelry, from solar-powered speedboats to natural beauty products. And we were looking, for instance, the CO2 footprint of a product. Were companies conscious of that? What were they doing about it? What materials they were using? What kind of manufacturing process? Um, were things designed to be cradle to cradle? Were they designed to be recycled at the end of their life? We were also looking for a passion, for innovation, for uh, a new vision of luxury which integrated ethical social, environmental values. Some in the luxury industry are waking up to their responsibilities beyond the success of the businesses themselves. And as a whole, the industry is at last beginning to examine its role in all facets of sustainability. The Principality of Monaco played host to one of the luxury industry's most important get-togethers the FT Beyond Green Conference. I think this is a great summit and it comes at, I think, the right time uh, uh, because uh, everybody's looking at uh, uh, what the economic crisis is going to do in broad terms, but as it relates to the luxury industry and how do we approach uh, in a more meaningful way, a more immediate way, the issues of sustainability. The FT Beyond Green Conference was a crucial opportunity for luxury leaders to discuss how they should be reacting to issues of sustainability within the luxury industry. Luxury as we know it, luxury as an industry, never has gone through anything like this. And so I think there's a huge amount of um, desire to, to talk through shared experience, weed through what's occurred and try and figure out the best way to go forward and what exactly is going to happen to the industry in the future. The central theme is sustainability and that takes a number of uh, angles, whether it's ethics or uh, the environment, and, and more fundamentally, how do you sort of um, project your brand at a time when people are really thinking about how much they should be spending on what um, conspicuous consumption has obviously been looked at um, a lot more carefully than previously. People are going to look more and more um, how it's made, where it's made, and who made it. If you have the right product uh, at the right price, and you're not making fun of your consumer, but you listen to them and you understand what they want from you and they want social responsibility and they want heritage and they want top-notch quality, then you can succeed. It is a great opportunity and uh, uh, everyone has to seize this opportunity at, at this time. The International Herald Tribune Sustainable Conference in Delhi was also attended by many of the most significant names in the luxury industry. The International Herald Tribune wanted to get a lot of different kind of people talking about this subject of sustainable luxury. I think it's a great opportunity to question ourselves what's good to be, what's good for us, and what's good for our children. New and emerging luxury markets were also high on the conference's agenda, and especially how they're confronting matters of sustainability. If you look now at what is happening in the world of luxury goods, you are seeing that uh, a lot of these companies are pinning all of their hopes on markets like India, like Brazil, like China, like Mexico, like South Korea. The explosion in, in, in the middle class, if you like, worldwide, and especially in emerging markets, means that luxury brands are very, very aspirational to these consumers. And what luxury brands can do is help deliver the sustainability debate or deliver a solution sustainability debate to these consumers by helping them make the right choices in terms of products and services which are which are, are more sustainable. One of the things that we found in our research is that consumers in emerging markets are much more highly engaged with issues around sustainability than in the developed markets. Ethical compliance is the key word which you need to do with sustainable luxury. We need to match the brain and the heart. This is probably what we need to change in our world.
luxury tourism has been flying the sustainability flag for many years. An early pioneer in terms of responsible eco-behavior in its business practices is Abercrombie in Kent, the world's leading luxury holiday company. We have always been very, very aware of the environment, health, education, and the ecology. And then we base it around where we operate, putting a lot of money into the actual ecology, anti-poaching, and all those sort of things. Everything is very, very environmentally friendly, and I think that A, our clients demand it, and B, we have to be there. It's got to be totally environmentally friendly and sustainable. And it is not just the wild and remote eco-luxury destinations that are working towards a more sustainable product. Le Fouquet on Paris's Georges V Avenue is one of the very few luxury hotels to have been awarded the world's most established quality and ethics certification. The International Organization for Standardization's ISO 14001 for the respect and preservation of the environment. The ISO awards emerged from the 1992 Rio Summit on the Environment and are an encouraging example of how businesses are beginning to police themselves on matters of sustainability. As a luxury palace hotel, we're amongst the top seven in what is a highly exclusive club of Parisian palace hotels. We're finding more and more that the high-end modern traveler wants to play their part in being sustainable, that they still expect the highest levels of service and hospitality. The ISO Green accreditation ensures that we meet stringent sustainability targets across the board, from recycling to power consumption, transport, CO2 emissions, and of course, where we source our food and products. Luxury transport has also come in for some serious criticism for its apparent indifference towards matters of sustainability. We are, by definition, an emitter. We pollute. Carbon emission is quite a topical subject, uh, not just in, in aviation, but across the board, and it's an uh, issue which needs to be addressed, um, and there has to be some accountability. The flip side to that is, obviously, that uh, jobs are being created um, and uh, economies are growing because of, uh, of these aircraft. Several private jet manufacturers and operators seem to be bucking the trend. Dassault are very, well, one of the manufacturers I think I could probably highlight. They've been able to reduce uh, emission on, on some of the current aircraft. We reduce the weight of the aircraft, we reduce the drag of the aircraft, and there, from there we reduce the fuel burn uh, again by 30 to 40 percent by comparison with, with competition. While firms like Dassault strive to reduce the consumption of traditional fuels, Others, such as the Brazilian company Embraer, are looking further afield for new answers. Brazil has the, the largest fleet of uh, cars powered by ethanol that we produce from sugarcane. And we, we were the first company to, to uh, produce in series an airplane powered by ethanol. And we are investing in uh, these biofuels for other applications, our turbo propellers as well as uh, jets. We're not going back to a, a horse and cart society. Innovation, technology, um, and crisp, clear thinking combined with good capital initiatives can create great solutions for a modern way of life. How some luxury brands are responding to issues of sustainability have proven to be multifaceted. You do have a platform to affect change and to get, people's, um, you know, to get people to listen. Um, and really that's the biggest thing. I think that perhaps, um, perhaps in this industry we can even, in some cases, do, do more than government intervention perhaps to, to inspire people to change. One response to sustainability from the Paris-based luxury group PPR which owns Gucci and other high-end brands, has been the production and promotion of the film Home. Released on World Environment Day, the film stunningly chronicles how our own lifestyles now threaten the world we live in. Home is taking you into this journey of explaining to you where the earth comes from, what we've done to it, which is pretty bad, and then it ends on such a positive, poetical note that that's the part that makes me cry the most, usually. Uh, because it tells you it's not too late. And I think 
What's happening today uh, in the world is that people are realizing this is not a joke. There's something we have to do, not only environmentally wise, but also um, we have to give back, we have to share, we have to be more responsible. And our shareholder has that very clear and also on a personal basis, he believes in it. And so he has pushed all his group's employees to support this cause. And, by home, we did something really beautiful. All the brands, all the companies PPR owns came together and the result was tremendous. We have seen that some brands, such as Loro Piana, Le Fouquet and Abercrombie in Kent, are offering their customers a more sustainable choice. Momentum is growing and appears global. From Monaco to Delhi, Paris to the Serengeti. In this program, we have seen that sustainability is the future of luxury. How brands respond will determine whether in future they will have a heritage to admire. Every crisis brings a change. And personally, I believe that changes, if you are careful and listen to what's happening, will bring something positive to you. This crisis can lead all of us to put more emphasis on innovation and creation. And on that respect, sustainability is in the heart of the answer to uh, the key to innovation. To give beauty and harmony to this world and to create something not brand new, but marvelously new for the future generation.